Welcome to the Banega Swasth India podcast. Our focus is on creating a holistic and healthy India for each and every one. Our goal is Lakshya Sampurna Swasthika, where citizens, individuals, society and governments work together to ensure health for all. Hello and welcome to a very special interview with a very special guest we have with us Ms Naina Lal Kidwai chair India Sanitation Coalition and chair Rothschild and Co India ma'am thank you so much for joining us you've always been very supportive of our campaign banega swasth india from year 1 and now in its ninth year as we gear up to mark world environment day on june 5th we wanted to explore the theme of health for all and our campaign's objective is lakshya sampurna swasthika and how it is impossible to achieve this goal if the environment around us is not healthy the deep linkages between the health of our planet and our health and how far we are from sustainable development goals and finally we will also talk about the impact of climate change on women and their health and what role can women play in the agenda for change to deal with health and environmental issues thank you so much ms kibai for joining us today thank you and congratulations for keeping this very important campaign going and doing it as successfully as you have done delighted to be engaged again you know to begin with you've written a book that predates uh, the covid pandemic called sos survive or sink an action agenda for sanitation water pollution and green finance now with the pandemic behind us how far do you think india has progressed on this agenda and how much of a hit did india take because of covid in achieving some of its health hygiene sanitation and even nutrition targets so ambika i think uh, the good news is because we had achieved so much under the wash campaign and swachh bharat where as a result of the messaging around the work that many of us were doing at the swachh bharat mission there was of course the toilet building which was very important mm-hmm. because we went from 40% access to toilets to nearly 99% access to toilets mm-hmm. the challenge of course remains on making sure people use the toilets uh use it for what it's meant for not what they are possibly using it for at times whether storage or otherwise or indeed occasionally using the toilets and not using them all the time so that messaging uh mm-hmm. remains a very important one but in the process through that pre covid time we had done many sessions with children with communities particularly in rural india mm-hmm. around hygiene Uh, how to wash hands understanding that water wasn't available so making sure that basic soap water comes available yeah. enable young kids to get into the habit of washing how to wash mm-hmm. little ditty skits it was plastered around walls uh, in the villages mm-hmm. a constant reminder about good health yeah. and good health was about an odf uh, free environment environment free from open defecation mm-hmm. so that you explained why uh you needed that clean environment yeah. so that kids would not get diarrhea I mean, we had kids dying from diarrhea uh, uh if you think of how nervous and worried we get when one plane goes down mm. and people are missing and in fact we had three plane loads worth of children actually dying because of diarrhea every day mm. so we have certainly made an impact on nutrition which derives from good health mm-hmm. because if you have diarrhea even if you give the best food to a child he, he or she doesn't retain it yeah. so the clean environment became a very important part of the wash messaging and i believe thanks to that because covid required hygienic behavior it was much easier for community activity around staying clean uh washing hands understanding hygiene than if we had not had the swachh bharat activity mm. pre covid uh i don't think there was a setback there in that it became harder for the not for profit community to wander through working with people mm. uh, the face to face interaction stopped but within communities i think the activity continued mm. so i don't think we lost time uh mm-hmm. in terms of uh, uh what was required of us in mm-hmm. terms of progressing on the swachh bharat front you know we are also said to be the most populous country in fact we are in the world what are the challenges that come about when it comes to meeting our health again hygiene nutrition and sanitation charts um, targets 
you know, it is actually our biggest challenge. How do we look after so many people in a way that they stay strong? Because this demographic dividend we talk about, which is an important one in terms of the math of having the ratio of young people to old people in favor of young people is all very well. But if we have a lot of sick people, it doesn't matter how many people you have, because at the end of the day, they're not productive. So health becomes a key factor. And in order to have good health, I think right at the top of that messaging is water. Yeah. Uh, how do we ensure that people have access to water, water to bathe, water to clean, clean water to drink, and of course, water for the whole Swachh Bharat messaging around toilets, use of toilets. Water, I think, is a very key part of how we are going to ensure that we make this whole space of ours clean, hygienic, and uh, critical for us going forward. Ms. Kidwai, your book also talked about the importance of the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. How sustainable has the achievement of that campaign been since 2019 when we met the open defecation free targets? And also how sustainable has it been since then in improving our sanitation goals and its impact on our health targets of malnutrition, diarrhea, and so on, all our, all our challenges? Uh, I think if you look at where we are in terms of the open defecation mm -hmm. free space, while toilet access has been guaranteed, we need to spend a lot of money now on helping people repair toilets. Mm -hmm. uh, in 30% of our toilets are still single pit in the rural environment. They need to move to twin pit, mm -hmm. which is the gold standard. So that money has uh, dried up somewhat and we have to enable access so people can move ahead with ensuring that the toilets are usable. The critical area which we are working at in the India Sanitation Coalition is also around how you treat what goes into the yeah. toilet. And even more so in the urban environment, it is about setting up these FSTPs, fecal sludge management That's systems, right. which can ensure that as you collect the fecal sludge in one place, that it's also treated. Because if it goes right back into the fields, we're right back at square one. The whole Namami Ganga program along the mm -hmm. Ganges, uh, there are FSTPs, uh, the pollution of the river is being aided. We do know, for example, that the river dolphins are back in many parts of our rivers. And that is, it was wonderful to hear the uh, uh, director of the Namami Ganga program talking about how the river dolphins were back and they were counting them. And that told them that the success of the program was working. Yes. And what better than having natural habitats return because we're able to clean things up again. So it is this whole program has to continue. We need funding at every stage from government, from corporates and citizens. And all three working together is where it works best. Banega's West India podcast will be back after a short break. Watch out for our new Banega Swast India video podcast, Swasthya Mantra, the first ever public health and hygiene podcast. The podcast is live on Spotify, Apple and YouTube in English and in Hindi. Welcome back to Banega Swast India podcast. So a humongous population also means that the amount of waste generated, you know, both solid as well as liquid waste is a growing concern. Do you see India is doing enough to tackle its waste crisis and its health and environmental consequences? Yes, you did tell us about the programs, but do you feel it's enough? And where, how more could we uh, improvise? Because of a large population, yeah. but sadly also a very poor civic sense, uh, what we have is a right royal mess. Garbage just everywhere and garbage beyond being able to be managed. Now, yeah. this garbage has value. Uh, I'm on the board of a cement company, Holsim, wow. and Holsim has some of the best systems for capturing plastic to use it as energy in cement kilns. Okay. So, uh, and elsewhere in the world, they pay wow. to get this plastic, but someone has to help collect the plastic in a way wow. that it gets mm. to the company yeah. so that it can be used by them. And those linkages are what are missing. Wow. So what we need is proper... Uh, Segregation, yes, but segregation at the household level is less critical mm -hmm. because we do not have a municipality or a system that knows how to deal with that segregation. Yeah. 
there's no point you and my, I segregating this and it's, it's getting, getting all mixed up yeah and i have visited many a municipality and even if it stays segregated to level 4 and 5 by the 6 mm-hmm. level it's again got mixed up mm-hmm. so we need proper chains right from the way you and i segregate our mm-hmm. garbage to when it reaches a whole sim for them to burn or when it reaches a uh, a road building activity where mm-hmm. plastic is being mm-hmm. used and compressed into roads since we're talking that gas population is a huge challenge in our country how much of a pressure will it exert on the environment our natural resources we're already one of the most polluted countries in the world it's always the headline you know these many cities in our country are polluted what are some of the policy interventions needed to ensure that our development is a sustainable one given the existential crisis we're already in so this is a huge question at every level mm. so let me talk about water which is where i work and you yeah. know i hit the fiki water mission so my work is primarily with corporates mm. and corporates get it because corporates need water uh, they understand that they must recycle what they have mm. if they're seen as drawing water mm. away from the communities that live around from where their factories are then those communities are going to object so many corporates will look not just to recycle water but also give back into the communities the water which they wouldn't otherwise have access to uh we are working very closely with the ministry the drinking water uh ministry in a lighthouse initiative which mm. we've adopted to start with 75 uh gps gram panchayats wow. and and there are 10 corporates the first 10 who are working mm. to ensure that the districts where these corporates were already doing some work look to wastewater reuse so grey water which is the runoff from bath water and it's not less, not the sewage black water but easier to treat with very light treatment systems which can be home grown we yeah. show them how they can reuse the water for horticulture and for uh, local farming and uh, other reuse even washery washing in some cases so wastewater reuse is a big message uh, conservation uh, of water bodies is another big space and the third is to make sure that the black water the sewage does not go and mess up the good water and then of course is rainwater harvesting check dams making sure that you can hold water you know one more interesting aspect you've talked about in the book is the role of women in sustainable management of water and sanitation uh, plus promoting green economy and green jobs we know that whether it's climate change or lack of toilets and water it definitely does affect women much more than men we did speak about that how can women be engaged in a role of i mean what role do you think they can play in sustainable development going forward given the current gender inequality unfortunately in our country and we are one of the lowest rates of women in the workforce as well what we've got is whether it's at the urban level where the mahila communities that come together around water actually administer how water is shared and it is women who are doing the collection it is women who line up it is the girl child sadly who has to miss school yes, to go and get the water uh, it is the women who are doing the washing so women and water and liberation from availability of water the fact that we have a program on right now mm. to deliver water on tap in each home is so critical it liberates women the washing machine liberated women in the western world otherwise half their day would go washing right so yeah. we need systems we need infrastructure we need women to be liberated from being the ones that are bound into the duties of water but the other side of it is because women understand this they also conserve and save water yeah. and i think that becomes the core we actually saw an amazing exercise in mm-hmm. swachh bharat when chatisgarh they the self help groups the women mm-hmm. got trained as masons to do the toilet building yes uh, because they were going nowhere they were not being able to meet their targets because they were short of masons so one woman had put up her hand saying you know if i want a toilet but there's no one here to build it show mm-hmm. me how and there was an excellent uh, is officer there who said well why not we'll let's train them all so a million uh, uh, women then get trained definitely that push is needed you know just at the end if you were to set the agenda today for sustainable development then what are the five critical things that you think india needs to prioritize to ensure we survive and we don't sink so i mean it goes without say right that i would say water i think water at every level stewardship for a corporate but a corporate looks to being 
net zero in terms of the way it handles its water so that there's no effluent, but also use, but also for each citizen in terms of some of the conservation and best practices we've suggested. So water to me is key in terms of what we as India and possibly the world needs going forward. I think the second is, I'll put it under the bucket of hygiene, but in that comes the whole Swachh Bharat uh, things we have discussed, including, you know, proper toilet, but waste treatment, making sure that communities understand what they're doing there. The third is the, the delivery of that infrastructure, which makes it possible. Okay. How do I deal with garbage? I should know my role, but someone has to also provide the infrastructure that enables uh, that yeah. delivery, whether it is sewage treatment at another mm -hmm. end, repair of my toilet, collection of plastic, whatever. I would say a fourth is really uh, the ramping up of the SAGs and the women movement, as we've just discussed. Yes, That is such a big, and we don't have too many successful SAGs at the urban environment. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. let's replicate those rural successes. Mm -hmm. It's harder in an urban environment because they're more mig uh, migrant. You don't get that strong community. Community, yeah, the connection. But, but there are many uh, ways of making it work. And Mexico has a hugely successful urban uh, uh, microfinance thing. Let's learn from that. And the fifth, I would say, is just the opportunities and urgency of the way we invest in nature, our biodiversity, our forests. I mean, you're right there, Ambika, as part of this program. You're seeing how closely knit people's lives are to the, those forests. In fact, you've put those five points, you know, really well. I mean, you know, what we asked you and then how we can achieve it. I think that's what is core. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. I mean, we always, I think every time you speak with us, we learn so much. It's always a pleasure to have you on our show on Banega Swastidya. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you, Ambika. That's it on the Banega Swastidya podcast this week. If you have comments, queries or suggestions on the topic we discussed today or issues you would like us to cover in future, do write to us on BSI podcast at the rate ndtv.com. Remember, BSI stands for Banega Swastidya. You can also connect with us on Banega Swastindya handles on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram and continue the conversation through the week. Till next week, this is Ambika Singh Kama signing off. Stay healthy and stay safe.